Party never ends on the 40 acres, that being the University of Texas campus. What a great night, a great day after to bring our guy, Alex Okafer. He's another Longhorn for life. Uh, I have two defensive linemen in here. I am by far the smallest human in most rooms, but definitely the smallest guy in, in this man cave with Alex Okafer and Stevie Lee. First off, with AO coming in here, what's your feelings right now? What are your thoughts? Are you still riding a, a, a drilling high from what occurred in Alabama last night? Yeah, man. I uh, I don't even know if the win is still real, if I'm being honest. So, I mean, <laughs> so, so many of those games over the past years, we've found a way to lose them. So, like, yeah. the fact that when you wake up this morning and there's a W in the column, it almost feels unreal, but, but I'm going to take it as it goes. I'm enjoying it. Stevie, how about you? I mean, your Sunday routine, get up, your family, you guys go go to church. But there, I, I got a feeling this was about as special. You got a little hop in your step like you do that first or second uh, Saturday in uh, October when it's after an OU win. Yeah, so um, I'm happy. Don't get me wrong, I'm really happy. But I really expected it. I ain't going to lie to you, man. I, I, I thought <laughs> I'm dead serious, man. I thought that this was going to happen. I, I knew that uh, Shark had a um, a game plan. And long as our offense got into some rhythm, I knew this was going to happen because I, I love the way our defense plays, right? So whenever I go and check out practice, those guys uh, on that front line look like Texas of old, right? Yeah. At 340, 360, 330. You know, that's old Sean Rogers, Casey Hampton, Marcus Tubbs, Stevie Lee type size. But, you know, me, I just love stopping the run, right? These guys are hybrids, right? They they are big, run stopping, but can get after the quarterback as well. You know, I, I got I think I had three sacks in my whole career because I was on the line fighting with taking on double teams. So, like I told you, so Derek Johnson can run around and make all the plays, you know. <laughs> so that that was and that was fine with me. I love that. I love fighting in the in the trenches. Um, but these guys today, they're that big and can do that, but also get after the quarterback. With what we had five sacks yesterday. Yeah. So um, I, I knew this defense was special just because it started up front with these guys that can do it both. Do do both. And um, I think uh, what's his name. Defensive line tackles coach. Um, Bo Davis. Davis. Coach Davis got the easiest job in America right now, man. He just – he he bring two out and put two of them back in, fresh bodies, you know. And so that's what really killed um, uh, 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 Alabama uh, on Saturday. So uh, I saw it coming. I am riding a, a high a little bit, but uh, I'd also put in my uh, text groups that uh, we're celebrating is – we 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 got a long season, so um, I did not like. I'm gonna be honest with you. I did not like them celebrating at two two forty in the morning. We just <laughs> it. no oh, man, let, them, let, let them have fun. <laughs> they're, they're gonna have. They should have had fun. They had fun in the locker room. They were out anyway. But go home, get some sleep, wake up, run out to the lactic acid to, this morning. Go watch film because we got Wyoming next. Y'all out here celebrating like we won a championship. We only won a game. That's all we won was a game, right? And so now Tuscaloosa is, is looking at us like, golly, they, they held us up like that. And I'm like, no, y'all, we won a game, a game that we were supposed to win because we're that good. Now let's go back to the drawing board and finish out this season. 100%. We're going to unbundle all of this. This is yeah. going to be a fun episode. And, Two things before we dive back into the Texas-Alabama game that was and what this could possibly mean. I mean, first off, over your lower right-hand corner, Hargrove Roofing, based out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah, they are they are big fans of Stevie Lee and, and uh, big fans of this podcast. And Hargrove Roofing, I've used them. They do quality work. And, you know, no one can do their slogan any better than the Stevie Lee. Hargrove Roofing, know who's on your roof. <laughs> And you'll find out why, because he does good acting, but it's really not acting. And I can't <laughs> wait for Alex to see this, uh, our, our middle break segment. You get to see Stevie Lee acting in a, in a commercial. It's it's pretty impressive, by the way. But, hey, yo, 
man, you, I'll tell you what, you're, as far as a model person is to, does everything right, great things have happened. You, you've dealt with, you know, the adversity that just comes with life, period. Mm-hmm. You have a great story dating back to your Pflugerville, um, Texas, um, your family, and then the NFL. And, of course, that beautiful story about your mother that you and I can relate on a lot now. Um, when you look back at it to now, and now you're, you're doing some big things with Longhorn Network and K-View here in Austin, Texas. You're, are you amazed of how the universe works? I mean, you you just been on a, a great trajectory since day one, it seems like. Yeah, man, it's uh, I tell people all the time I'm blessed and um, being from this area, um, being able to go to school close to home. Um, I've just been able to stay local. I've been able to pour into my community and always coming back to my community. My community pours back into me. So, uh, you know, we got a good relationship and, you know, I got a lot of love out here. Well, you are loved and you're just a good, good human being and. I love your takes on football and life. And I know Stevie uh, was excited when you and I had touched base. And uh, and again, the universe again lined us up for the day after a game that just happened uh, mm-hmm. in Tuscaloosa. I've got to ask you both, and we'll start with you, Alex, first. Best Texas win on the road since fill in the blank. Who best Texas win on the road since? Ah, oh, you got to go back to <laughs> You got to go back to my junior year. It has to be A and M, right? It has that's, to that's be a good one. It has to be. Is it the last A and M game? Yeah, I think that was what 2011, 2012, something like that. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. That's up there. That's a, that's a good one. What it's do you think, Stevie? One. I was about to say Ohio State. In Ohio State. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> That because, might be the, that might be the biggest. I don't know. <laughs> That's a big one. Yeah. yeah. What was that? Was that Lima Sweet um, catching it in, in the, the end zone at the shoe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ohio State at Ohio State for me right now. Can't think of anything else, but that's that's a big one. That's huge. I was gonna say it was either that one or the '98 win at Nebraska. Back when Nebraska was rolling. The black shirts, was it? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I comes up. So there are no wrong answers. No wrong answers here. I just, you know, that's a big debate. And I love it. love to see it when there's positivity on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it these days. And people are going back and forth talking about that. And I think this just adds to it because that means the fan base is excited. And they deserve it. They deserve this. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to talk about the modern day. This, this, this is the biggest win. What it will do for the program, we don't know. But start with AO first. Your your and is your first thoughts day after as you allowed it to marinate. What mm-hmm. do you think about this team moving forward? Ooh, man, um, there's a lot of thoughts. There's a lot of emotions. Let me let me try to reel all that in real quick. Um, I don't know. I guess just thoughts. My biggest takeaways was I felt like it was the first time in a really long time where our best players were the best players on the field. And I felt like wow. that was the yeah. case last night. Like not just the best players on our team, but the best players on the field. And I think that showed last night. Um, kind of like what Stevie was saying earlier, I just hope we don't let our foot off the gas. I know, you know, we Wyoming ain't the best team, but they, they're good enough just to, you know, give us a hard time. So, you know, I think last night showed that we can beat anybody, and we believe that now we just got to carry that on. Stevie, you you've got a lot of thoughts, but how how do you just put a bow on that on that on that gift that was the victory, the gift to all of us or yeah. the fan base? That is no question. So um, great win, great when they went in there and did what they were supposed to do. Um, Shark got uh, everybody in rhythm on offense. The defense was just clicking. And get out of there with the win. Celebrate. Enjoy the win. But what this does for the season is it gives us confident that we, confidence that we can, you know, beat anybody in the country. But we still got a lot more games to play. So staying healthy, you know, putting the right things in your body, 
Um, Coach Beckton, uh, Tory Beckton is doing a great job because I did not see not one of our guys get tired yesterday. Yeah, that's good. And they and and those boys are big and strong, and no one was tired on the field, right? That's, um, that's what you need late in the in a in a season too. Um, our injuries kept to a minimum yesterday. You know, um, I don't think that we had any big big injuries to, that that anybody are, are out for. I haven't looked at the injury report or anything like that, but um, we got a long season, so. Take what you learn, because there were some bad throws, there were some bad routes. You know, we still got to learn and build off of that and get better every week. Well, that's what I was going to allude to first. We'll start off on the offensive side of the ball. You guys are, are, you know, biased toward the defensive side, and for good reasons. You guys played at a very high level for a long time on the defensive side. But a lot of criticism, and, and, and it was in some ways just the deep ball. There were issues with the deep ball with Quinn. And we saw the reaction he had after that Rice game, which I'm just going to say this. How they played against Rice, which we'll get into, was vanilla for a reason. There was a purpose. You guys have all been a part of vanilla game plan, so you won't put anything on film. That's what I think it was. And I think Rice is much better than we gave any of us gave them credit. And we'll talk about that because Stevie, Stevie has some things to say, but you know, we're going to relive a couple of those deep balls right here. One of them to Worthy, but two to this young man. Really showing tonight. Here's from the pocket, launching down field. Mitchell, touchdown, Texas. It could stuff. not have been any quieter than it was <laughs> last night. And that, for you guys, that had to have been just like an early dessert, early Christmas gift to see, to hear how silent that place was. Yeah, that was that was pretty neat, man. Um, golly, I, I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, but I still take issues with those deep balls. <laughs> go ahead, A.O., you go ahead and talk, and then I'll tell you what I did. <laughs> Hey, I don't, I don't know what Stevie's getting at, but I was pleased with what I saw. Like, <laughs> I don't know if we watched the same game, but those deep balls were good enough to win us the game. So, and and we haven't won games like that in a long time. So, I, I've been critical of of Quinn Quinn Ewers. I I got to give him his props when it's when it's deserved. So, I don't have much to say. I was pleased. All right, can I go now? Well, Stevie, I was going to tell you this, and this will add to some fuel to your fire here. Uh, 24 of 38, three touchdowns, zero interceptions again. And if you want to count, well, no, running has nothing to do with the deep ball. But that's, again, the second half, he was on. First half, we punched – I mean, we, good Lord. Texas punched him in the face first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, so you're right, A.O., great deep balls. But I'm being I'm nitpicking right now, right? Credit is due to yours for making the making the throw. Um, but more credit to Worthy and Mitchell because those throw those catches should not have been that hard. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's why I'm getting that. Right. Okay. That makes Catching sense. a ball over the back of your head like that is really, really hard if he would have just led him to the left a little bit where he can turn around and catch it in his bread basket, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to separate you from being a quarterback to an elite quarterback, right? And you're QB1 at the University of Texas, and you got to get better at that because there are going to be days that your receivers are not on like that. Those mm -hmm. receivers were on last okay. night to go catch a – I don't want to even call it a bad ball, but go catch a difficult ball to catch, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're going to need to turn around and get the ball right here in their bread basket. So that's, that was my little criticism of last night. Cause over the head like that is an extremely, extremely hard ball to catch. But um, that one ball, that last one was, I mean, I know what you're saying, but he placed it perfectly in stride. Maybe no, he's just, huh? No. If you, if you look at the uh, film of the uh, behind yours, the film, the, 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 the shot with the, the, the cameras behind yours. Yours had the whole left side of the field open. 
So he could have led his receiver left a little bit more to where the receiver can look over his left shoulder and get it. He still had to go over and catch it coming in over his shoulder instead of turning, turn, being able to turn. The safety was gone. The safety was gone in the corner uh, 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 to the left side, so no one was in the middle, and it's, he still made it a difficult catch. He caught. We caught it. Mitchell caught it. It's fine. It's great, but I guarantee you Sharp is in the meeting room telling him, lead him for an easier catch and not don't make it so difficult on your receiver. I bet Millway tells him to keep doing what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but if you – and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm being nitpicky. But to elevate your game, make it easier for your receivers to get to it. And if y'all go back and watch it, you know, I know I'll get some texts from y'all. I'm like, oh, Stevie, you're right. <laughs> and and and, and, um, and I'll be like, yeah, I, I love the throw. I love the confidence that he had to make the throw. Uh, but it could have been a little bit better. And now we're talking about those two deep balls that he hit. There was a couple deep balls that he also missed, too. Let's yeah. not forget about yeah. those. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he missed on some deep balls. And he almost missed on two deep balls that we got. Not if we didn't have outstanding receivers, they would have missed on those too. Yeah. No, I think Stevie, he makes an interesting point. Um, I kind of get where he's coming from just because, especially that second one to A.D. Mitchell, after that throw and after the catch, I said, I walked away saying, wow, like that was a big time catch. Like that was my first reaction. Was it a so big time throw or was it a big time catch? Well, that's what I said. I said I, I walked away saying it was a big time catch, exactly. and I consciously I didn't even think about the you know the the throw like that. So I kind of get where Stevie's coming from. I guess for me, he did enough for the touchdown passes. Like if this was just a regular forty yard bomb or anything, okay, we could be nitpicky. But he did enough to connect on the TD passes, and <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, I, get it, I, I get it, I get it. I get it. Hard, but just, man. Trust me, I'm still a Longhorn. I just yeah. that's just a little thing yeah. that I see, you know. Yeah. No, it's it, it makes sense, but I you know I'm just I'm just saying I'm not trying to defend Quinn or defend anybody or or or, or hype up someone or give credit. I just thought that last one that we're referencing to Ad Mitchell late in the game, which pretty much put it away, when he did something, Quinn did something that I'd never seen him do before. For a positive, he lofted it put up more air usually he's putting the zingers on he put air underneath this one it was like a moonshot mm -hmm. and i thought he uh ad was gonna play center field like a baseball player but it, it went right into his arm but to your point steve i see what you're saying lead them to the side to catch with the hands instead of doing this yeah i get it yeah. that's, that's get all it. i'm saying but the, the balls on that kid they even hanging up there like that it's good you know yeah well <laughs> quinn referenced or gave credit to Sark for everything that you guys are talking about and everything we're talking about because of the, the, the play calling. And I, I, I don't, I, he's not wrong. We always trust coach Sark. I mean, he's got it dialed up and we prepare the way we prepare it. We're hard to stop. If they execute and don't turn the ball over, which they didn't do. I mean, start with UAO. Uh, when you, when you listen to that quick soundbite from Quinn, mm -hmm. um, do, can they be that offense that nobody in America can stop when they're executing? Yeah, I think last night showed that when we're firing on all cylinders, like even the best, some of the best teams in the country can't even keep up with us. And that showed with a 10 point win, which could have been bigger. Um, I guess for me, that clip showed that the team, they believe in Sark. They believe that Sark is going to put them in the best position to win. And that belief is huge. It showed last night. Um, I this, I feel like there's a good feeling within this team. And that, that clip was just kind of a glimpse of that right there. Yeah, I agree, man. I think that they are bought into the system. Um, and what I mean by system is the defensive system, the special team system, the offensive system, and the um, strength and conditioning system. They have bought in all around. And that's what you need to get you to the next level. Everybody's all in. Yeah, and even um... – Sark, you know, he's he deflects a lot of credit. He's never going to take credit for anything. Um, but 
I will say after they pulled out that win, I, I, I thought it was hilarious. You know, you had Holly roll in the field asking him questions. And Sark, who worked for Saban for, what, three years, pointed out a certain stat. So, obviously, Sark has done his homework. This just shows me. This little stat he pointed out shows me how much preparation that he has put forth and invested into that game alone. You know of all people how hard it is to win here in this place. What does it mean to you and to your program to get a win like this on the road? Well, I didn't want to tell the guys that they were 52-1 and in their last 53 games, so I guess they're 52-2 and now. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot, man. That's that's my coach now, man. That's your coach. <laughs> that's yeah. a guy who's done a lot of homework. Obviously, no saving. But AO, when you when you look at the the entire picture, can a team? And I look. I, I want. I can't wait to hear the answer from both of you on this, because obviously, I never played at this level. Never played at the high level, remotely close. Can a team get up and prepare, prepare for, and get up emotionally and physically every week like that for every opponent? Mm-hmm. You starting with me on this one? Yeah. Man, um, yeah. I think you see the great teams do that. Like the teams that go down the stretch, the the Georgias, the, the Bamas, these type of teams, the teams that do that are the teams that end up being champions. And that's why – it's only a couple teams in, in the whole realm of college football doing that right now. And we're kind of trying to, you know, break into that realm right now. Um, I think it's possible, but it is very difficult. And I think it all leans on maturity. I think getting up and getting down for games, that's just a, that's a direct reflection of the maturity of your team. And, you know, this next game, we'll be able to see that for us, at least. That's a great point. St- Stevie, you – you you were just this close of winning a championship. Mm-hmm. You played in, well, in the Coach Rose Brown Bowl. tells us we were twelve points away. <laughs> oh my God, Oklahoma! That's yeah. right. <laughs> we lost twelve zero. It's only lost my senior year, but um, I think you're you're right, Alex. Uh, Ao, we. Um... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I appreciate the correction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's um, it's hard to get up for for every single game, but you're right that the maturity level of what these guys are going to have to go through and you have to do it. If you, if your goals are lofty and, and you want to win the big 12 and you, that means you got to run through the big 12. You got to run it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you got to get up for every single game and um, preparing your body and your mind for the, during the week. So you can be up for the game uh, on, on Saturday. So you're, you're exactly right. It's maturity. It's it's uh, managing. Well, I think the key, honestly, is something that you guys will enjoy to talk about, defense. I, I am a defensive guy myself, but I think uh, teams are built defensively. Built, They have to build the defense before you develop an offense because you have to stop an opponent. But when you look at the, the stats there, uh, from a defensive point of view, the one that stood out to me the most – I mean, you see 362 total yards on the road and a couple of picks. But the one that stood out to me was 107 total yards rushing allowed to Alabama. Mm -hmm. A.O., I know we've seen how talented this defense can be with the likes of Jade Barron, the defensive line that Stevie has mentioned, like Tavondre Sweat, all those guys. And then the linebackers. Can't say enough about 41, but – this kind of, I mean, I'll be honest with you, your last year in what, 2013? Uh, 2012, 2013, whatever. It's that in between year, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You guys had a high level front. Mm hmm. At a really high level front. Does, what did you see that makes you have confidence? Because I saw a lot just from a fan point of view. Mm hmm. Stevie's mentioned it. What did you see from a guy who sees film a lot differently than most people? Mm -hmm. I think the thing that jumps off the tape for me is just the physicality level. Um, And we saw it last year as well. Um, Even after the loss last year against Bama, I walked away saying, okay, D-line, like we can build with this. Like after that loss last year, I said we can build with this. So it's exciting to see that carry over into this year and like i said just continuing off of my point the physicality level was different i thought we took it to bama 
Um, I, you know, I haven't seen Bama play a game on their heels in a long time. And I felt like that's how the game kind of went last night. So, you know, as a fellow D lineman, I was proud of those boys. <laughs> Stevie, same thing. You, you mentioned a little bit about it, but that's what jumped out at for me too, defensively. And of course, because of that D line, I think that's why the DB or the secondary succeeds. Yeah. Um, they, they got push up front. Um, the only reason they got over a um, uh, 107 or 100 yards is that 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 design scramble that their quarterback yeah. went up the middle, and they they knew not to do that again because they're <laughs> <laughs> no question. <laughs> yeah, so they did it one time. I thought they were going to go back to it honestly, and they probably should have. Um, but uh, they they never went back to that uh, design draw. He what he got like 30, 40 yards on that play, or something like that, and um, and so. Other than that, man, we held them uh, to, you know, almost a little of nothing, you know, and they, and that's a team that like to be balanced. And yeah. We made them one-dimensional, made them have to throw a ball, and we see that that's not uh, his uh, strong point. Uh, but the, it, it all started up front. The D-line dominated the line. Now, I did get some insider information from uh, one of the, uh, the strength and conditioning coach, Tori. He said that their O line. This is what he said. Their O line said something in the media which pissed our D line off. And I was watching the game with that in the back of my mind. I was like, "Oh, they are playing pissed." What they say? They are. Playing pissed. I, he didn't tell me what they said. Oh, oh. He said that they. He said that they 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 were pissed off during the week for something that one of those O linemen said in the media, and and that bulletin board material worked for them because they played with fire in her eyes and I, and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Well, there's a lot of bulletin board, but I will say this is a, his, I think this is going to be a respectful, um, healthy rivalry moving forward, but yeah. you're going to love these tweets. Game tweets are on X, whatever we're calling it these days. Um, there's a couple of them that I picked out for you guys. You probably saw them, but it's fun on game day. That's what makes it so special. So the top one, our guy, Sam Ellinger, you know, he's uh, playing for the Indianapolis Colts. If it'll come up, maybe one of these days it'll come up. There it is. Horns win, Aggies lose. Hashtag <laughs> SEC. <laughs> Straight to the point. Straight to the point. <laughs> and then Anthony Hill talking about his son, A. Hill Jr. Let's go, Pop. Proud of you. Put some respect on my son's MF and name, Anthony Hill Jr. Mm -hmm. Now, that's something I'm glad I forgot to ask you guys about. Number zero on defense, a freshman. Man. Yeah. All over the field. Man, I, I told my boys, man, we haven't seen an athlete like that at Texas in a while. Like, you talk about somebody that's just jumping off the tape, that's that's Ant Hill, man. He... He don't even mean to make some of the plays that he'd be making. <laughs> yeah, we we haven't seen a player like that since 2012, 2013 with AO, right? So <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, that. yeah, absolutely. There we go, Stevie. <laughs> yeah. So um, but you're right, man. He he um he's a natural athlete, made a mistake. I'm hey man, we early in the season, I'm gonna call it out. He made a mistake. Too much. Yeah. He he went up. He got upfield too high and uh, and gave a, a running lane for uh, them to get a first down with uh, with quarterback scramble. But um, other than that, man, he played a really good game as a freshman. That's that's that, you know you're playing one of the biggest games of Texas football history. Yeah, and go in there and perform like that, you know. So that that was all good. That was, I, I love to see that. I love to um, I love that he. Um, he, first of all, playing and getting playing time like this, but also um, shining under these lights like that, you know. And it's that's a, that's that's why a lot of opponents lose in that in that facility because mm -hmm. they're defeated as soon as they walk in. Yep, that's the impression. Now, your guy Vy, he was on the field, um, got his response, and we we mentioned a certain game that he's going to reference about. You know when Vy compliments a team as a team, 
he is he's that's quite a compliment because from what every if everyone's watching or listening to this episode they feel the passion and, and, and the honesty. You guys are very candid. And, and to add to what you guys said, this is what B.Y. said about them. That's not easy. No. No. Y'all know. When we played on Ohio State that year, that shit was tough. We got A.J. Hawk chasing my ass off. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt, man. I'm proud of them, man. Quinn held it down. Most quarterbacks probably would have fold under that type of person in a hostile environment. They get a legendary coach, a legendary team. So I'm very proud of each and last one of those guys. Love it. Love it. What, do you, what, what kind of heart they show you tonight, man? They show me, um, you know, they, you know, one thing what they did today, they show who they are, their identity. Yeah. And once you find it in the beginning of the year, yeah. early in the part of the year, now you know who you are. And that happened to us in 05 when we played Ohio State. We knew exactly who we were. Yeah. And now we just got to ride that. Yeah. You know, enjoy the moment tonight. Yeah. And then get your ass back to work. <laughs> I love it, man. The dude said everything I just said, man. He, he did. <laughs> I, I swear I didn't. I didn't watch that. That was my first time watching that. Liar. No, that's my first <laughs> time watching that. I'm telling you, man. I did not like the celebration last night at 2:41 a.m. You know, enjoy the moment. The moment was when you went in the locker room. Enjoy with your with your guys. Enjoy it on the plane. Eat the M and M's. Throw the pillows. <laughs> You know what we do on the plane, AO. Hey, no question. And cut up on the plane, cut up on the bus ride back. Now take your tail home, go to sleep, get up today, get up on Sunday, and get your running in, get your treatments in, get your film in, and get ready for Wyoming. Get back to work. I that that's that's my soapbox. Hey. I'm getting off of it now. Hopefully they get they get grounded again and get back to work because um it ain't over. This is the second game of the season. We got a long season, y'all. A long season. So let's get back to it, you know? So I hope that we're not walking around that building with a bunch of with, with smiles on our faces. Put that win behind us and let's get back to work because we still got to get better. Still got to get better. The 24 hour rule, right, AO? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm with Stevie on that one. However, I will say that, I mean, Stevie, I get it. It's like an act like you've been there before type of moment. But I mean, when was the last time we've been here? Like, I like, and our team is so young. Coming back with the campus feeling like that, everybody's outdoor. It felt like a pep rally out there. One of them OU pep rallies. That's what it looked like. So, hey, oh, it sounded like you was out there. I woke up this morning wishing I was out there. I can't ah. lie to you. <laughs> I didn't know there was going to be an after party. I missed the memo. <laughs> uh, you know what? And so when I did get on uh, Instagram. I think Worthy called that. He, 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 I think he uh, put it out there that they get back at, he said, meet us at the tower. Oh, okay. So he's Instagram. the one that he initiated. The tower, we get back in at 2 30. Oh, wow. I did yeah. not know that. So he yeah. called it. Yeah. And, and I, because I was on Instagram after the game, and I think I saw that from his Instagram. Someone mm -hmm. said we get back at 2.30, meet us at the tower. Interesting. I did yeah. not know that. That's what happens when you fall asleep before then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's leadership. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get the whole campus to the tower, man. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, listen, guys, this is not to uh, criticize this generation or anything. I'm not. But what encouraged me when I saw that, to have the student body, who, in my opinion, here and other places looks disinterested in really getting into the spirit of college athletics, in my opinion, for them to be there at 2.41 in the morning, that meant something to me. That gave me hope that, hey, I, this younger generation, they still got it. They got it <laughs> in them. Yeah, but – also, Sean, we live in Austin, Texas. Well, that's true. You're, you're, you're back out to in four anyway. They're, I get it. They're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're only – they're just coming back in from 6th Street anyway. Like they, <laughs> that, well, they're all the way back anyway, so they just may as well stop by the tower. Oh, <laughs> it was oh, an oh, easy oh, stop yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 Uber, take me around the circle. <laughs> Drop me off. Or I still love VY. He said that AJ Hawk chasing my ass all over the field. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Hey, bring give me as many VY clips as you can find, man. He he gives it to you raw. And I love, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> love that. Hey, don't hate me. 
I'm just a, I'm just asking questions, but it's a tiring question. Yeah, Man. everybody loves it. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. But what do you tell somebody or hey, what somebody says or asks this question? We'll start with you, Stevie. Is Texas back? Let's let's just be diplomatic about it. Let's just say we'll see. Good answer. Just say we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, we don't. Uh, a Bama win doesn't mean we're back. You know, um, celebrating in the in the fountain at the, <laughs> that doesn't mean we're back. You know, <laughs> so, um, what 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 means we're back is we are having constant nine and ten win seasons back to back. True. Right. So we what we went eight last year, and um, that's not a nine win season. You know, uh, we lost to Bama, and people thought it was a great moral victory. Nope, we still lost to Bama last year, right? So um, when, when Texas is back, is we constantly have nine, ten win seasons, and we are in the college football playoffs uh, and competing for national championships is when Texas is back. So. All you got to do right now is just say, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. First, I did not know how to answer this question, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal Stevie's answer. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save that one for uh, for later. But, um, man, I, we'll see is the perfect answer just because we have a long way to go. And Texas fans are kidding themselves if they think we're not going to be sweating the rest of the season. Like, mm-hmm. we're going to be in plenty more dog fights. There's going to be some games where we don't look good and we just got to scratch and claw and get out of there. So we're we're going to be put in a lot of situations where it's going to be reminiscent of old Texas. But what's going to make us new Texas is if we can pull through. So like Stevie said, we will see. But is there anything that you can remember from football, family, or anything that is as comical now as it was when it happened? Man, ah. Uh... You don't ever remember the good stories on the spot. That's the hard part. Um, <laughs> um, for I guess for me, just something easy for me. I, I can I can kind of elaborate into some of my like rookie hazing um, <laughs> early in the NFL. Um, I uh, I don't know if people are familiar with this man uh, Darnell Dockett. If you don't know who that guy is, do a little bit of research on him. But. Uh, <laughs> But uh, so that was ROG. That was our vet uh, for our rookie class coming in, man. So they they had us doing some stuff that was off the wall. Um, first of all, they they told us right off the bat they're not going after our money. We don't want that money. That's what they told us. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like it's gonna be a breeze. That's what I was worried about. I was worried about the 10k dinner horror stories like that. So Ooh. I'm like, cool, okay. You don't want to dive into my pockets. I'm good. It's gonna be piece of cake. I remember first road game of the year, preseason. They took all the rookies. They told us to come up to the uh, the older guys' hotel room. So we're like, okay. So we all get off the elevator going into the room. We get into the room, and there's just, like, single chairs just scattered across the room, and each vet has a pair of clippers in their hands. Oh, <laughs> Oh, has a pair of clippers in the hands, and you know each vet is uh, in charge of each position group. So you got the vet for the linebackers, which is Carlos Dance. We all was on the Cardinals at the time. You got the D tackle vet, which was Dar- uh, Darnell Dockett, and then you had uh, the DN vet, which was uh, John Abraham. He was my OG. Oh wow! So everybody had a pair of clippers in their hand, and it's literally single file line. So I'm seeing guys get their eyebrows shaved off. I'm seeing guys oh. getting half their head cut off. Like it's, They're not giving out normal cuts. Like nobody's just getting the clean shave, nothing like that. Like they're going all out with it. So I'm up next. I'm like, man, in my mind, I'm like, just don't touch my eyebrows. Like if I can get out this situation without my eyebrows getting clipped, it is a dub. So John Abraham's working on my head, all that. I can feel all this type of action going on. I'm good because they haven't gotten to my eyebrows yet. But finally, when they finished, they put the mirror in front of me. And guess who they shake? They cut me up like Mr. T. Oh! <laughs> the Mohawk. <laughs> the Mohawk with the yeah. shaved sides, the 
the line and the beer right there. They got me good. He got me to a T. Like it is, it is unbelievable. It, it was so good that I couldn't be mad. Like if you want to see this pic, I think you saw the way at the bottom of my IG. You can take a look. But, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, brother, I love it. That's good stuff, you. man. No doubt. Wait, so oh. I got a question. Follow up question is: Did you guys have to wear it, or they let you cut it off after they did it? So the rule was we had to wear it into the first preseason game. And after that preseason game, we can do what we want with our with our with our faces. So <laughs> so when I say when I say the rookies did not come out their helmets the whole game, because you know if you come out your helmet, now you gotta pick on Google for life. So you can, so you keeping the helmet on the whole like I'm, it's fourth quarter. I ain't played in about 20 snaps. I still got my helmet on. <laughs> Am I wrong for thinking there was one, there is a picture picture circulating somewhere with your, your mohawk? So I, I actually posted it myself on IG because it was so good. So you can look at the bottom of my IG, but there's no candidates. Like everything at the bottom. Is, every, <laughs> at, at the very, very bottom. bottom. <laughs> that is, I love it, Ayo. That's a great story. That's good. That, that's one thing, and I'll say it because I know you can't, or maybe you guys can but I'll say this: There's a everyone. There's a lot of people who are very. The society is very sensitive these days, and I went through hazing and fraternity hazing. I went through it, but foot at football teams. It's a rite of passage. Everything. And shoot, we got hazed in varsity in high school when we get when you got pulled up. It's fun, but when you hear hazing, most people go, "Oh, oh, we can't do that anymore." Yeah, you know, but. Yeah. Oh well, I, I'm so not just haze responsibly. Haze responsibly. <laughs> That's it. There you go. They, I mean, because there are a lot of benefits to haze. I mean, to me, yeah. I mean, you build up that trust between the old guys and the young guys. It's 100%. a it's a weird dynamic, but that trust gets built throughout that process. So, Absolutely. You know. And you learn to appreciate things. Yep. Um, no question. Like, like right I'm now, gonna... you're probably going to appreciate the guy on the upper right. Not a bad job of acting in the latest ad for Hargrove Roofing. I'll see you guys here in about a minute and a half. Here at Hargrove Roofing, uh, we try to think outside the box to kind of get the creative juices flowing. So I brought in my friend Stevie Lee, former defensive tackle for the Texas Longhorns. Um, he's going to help the team strategize, really motivate them, light a fire. This guy's going to block down. This guy's going to block down. You put your butt into the guard, and that way my Mike linebacker gets free to do what? Not only are they going to learn a thing or two, but they're going to also leave with a great attitude and a bunch of smiles on their faces. I, I'm sorry, what does this have to do with roofing exactly? Get out. Right now. I said get out. For me, that's what it's all about. It's just having fun, making our employees have a great time. Hargrove Roofing, know who's on your roof. went in and we beat really the best team in the SEC over the last 10 years, but the second best team in the SEC over the last three to five years. And they say, we not ready for the SEC? Who not ready for the SEC? SEC is one in five. Oh, now they're one in six versus power five teams. And Texas, they won in over versus SEC teams. And we got them leaving the stadium early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where does he get that energy? I just want to know. He's full of energy, nonstop. Yeah, <laughs> He's hanging out with Oprah, writing books, both of them. Manuel and Samuel do doing big things. But that's a big stat that a lot of people – listen, I am glad that Texas and OU are going to the SEC. It's, it is the Premier League. But right now, they're not – SEC is not looking that great, gentlemen, except for Georgia. I don't know what, yeah. what you guys think. Yeah, um, we'll see again, yeah. right? So, yeah. you know, there's, there's, I mean, the, the top teams are still doing okay. Yeah. You know, LSU did lose to uh, Florida State, yes, but um, LSU always going to bounce back. They're, they're paying uh, Brian Kelly way too much money for them not to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still got hope for AM to come up, come around because I can't wait for that 
Texas, Texas A&M in a game to come back, man. I want A&M to be good. I want us to be good. I want that to be a premier game, you know, the only game on TV that weekend, you know. So um, I, I got hope that everybody is going to be back to the uh, uh, cream of the crop uh, of, of college football in the SEC. So uh, we'll see. It's still early. when They play some big games in, in the beginning, but now, you know, we'll get settled in and uh, see what the SEC has to offer. Uh, next year hey yo what i mean i I'm, I'm just i know a lot of these programs have not all played power five conference teams in their first two games i get it you play lower fbs it's all right but is it it's not fair i mean it's not fair for any of us to truly judge them yet right or is it or do you see a little okay we see a little bit more parity right now Man, uh, man, I think for a while now, I think the SEC has just become really top loaded. Um, I think that's been building up for a while. So <laughs> I think that's why there's so much parity now. Um, but I'm going to look at it at, at it this way. Um, I remember when A&M and Mizzou first went to the SEC. Yes. And both of those teams kind of caught a lot of SEC teams off guard and got a lot of early wins. Now, Grant, I know A&M had Manziel, but – Mizzou still played well in that conference. So I'm hoping we get that kind of like grace going into the SEC because not only do we got to prep to go there, they got to prep for us too. Like we're going to bring a different style over there as well. So it'll be interesting to see if we can, you know, get an adjustment period going for those teams over there. That's that's good feedback. And that's something that I think a lot of people overlooked is the, the fact that, yes, the SEC is superior but the Big 12 plays good football, no doubt about it. And just because the names, like Iowa State, Kansas State, look what Kansas State has done to people. Outside of that Sugar Bowl against Alabama last year, it's not true. So TikTok, it's a social media platform, a lot of humor on it, a lot of humor on it. There is this uncle. He's an older, older gentleman. They've got a series of videos. This is absolutely hilarious, and I don't – where is the video? Uh oh, you guys bear with me here. Oh, here it is. I didn't move it up. There's my edit point right there. So this there is I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, when I brought it up, for some reason, it slid down eight spots. This is a little bit more complex than most people realize, or it's just a user. Uh, so it's an uncle and his nephew, and the nephews always always antagonizing provoking the uncle this is all over a, a he wanted a a chair because he was sitting on a pickle bucket and the uncle took it a step further as he always does oh lord this motherfucker bought me the motherfucker electric chair from green mile are you fucking kidding me that's a that's a green mile electric chair motherfucking same chair look like motherfucking are you fucking kidding me, man? <laughs> Come on, oh, man. Motherfucker, seven shades of gray. You gotta be kidding me, man. At least sit in this seat. I'm not sitting in that. I guarantee to get shot. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not sitting in that, man. A lot of people passed away in that chair, man. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> that shit was in the green mile. <laughs> no, and I, I, I didn't know who you were talking about, but I remember seeing them, man. It, they are hilarious, dude. You got to go and watch all the TikToks. They, they Do you think the hilarious. uncle plans any of that? No, he's he's straight off his dome, man. He's he he is funny, man. And a lot of them is his him sitting on the porch. And oh the nephews, he has another nephew that comes up and they mess with him and he just roasts them right like hard, man. Oh. And 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 actually he reminds me of uh one of my cousins in my family, man. And you just walk up and he'll find something and he will roast you on it, man. So <laughs> I like it. I love it, man. It's good. Hey, it ain't love if, if people aren't messing with you. No question. <laughs> Hey yo, you, if and and Stevie, like for me, it was my late great uncles, just vile, funny, mm -hmm. just always poking and prodding, and, and it's just taking it to another level. Yeah, and, and we've all had those in our family. Absolutely. Non -stop. 
No, and that's what makes it so funny is everybody can can see Unc and, and relate it to somebody in their family. So <laughs> I think that's why it resonates so well. Yeah. Very much so. We it's we're it's all relatable. Mm. God, memories forever. And I feel yeah. sorry for Unc because his uh nephew, God, his his uh right arm, left arm, good lord, I swear, it's that Stephen F. Austin education. His left arm is always bruised up. From, from his nephew doing it. <laughs> That's funny. He's got he's got a third degree contusion of the forearm. <laughs> hey, we love uh, we love positivity in the man cave, and that's how we're gonna wrap this up. Hey Ben, tell me something good. Hey yo, Alex Okafer. We uh, there's a lot of positive things. You wouldn't notice it by jumping on some of the social media platforms. A lot of great things uh, like this right now. We're watching the Cowboys. It's uh, 32 to nothing in the early third quarter. That's positive. But uh, there's more to life than football. We all know that. But football is life. Uh, Ao, you you have a beautiful family. You have you've had some great experiences in your life. But tell me something good that you may feel that is not only positive but inspiring to other people. Oh, man. Um, I guess for me, um, me, I guess the difficult thing for me as of late has been I retired in December. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to, as any athlete does, they're trying to figure out what the next step is. For them. So <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm going through this process right now, um, I'm not sure what that next step is going to be. I'm experimenting a lot right now. But I do know in the meantime, I can go positively, positively affect some kids. So I'm from this area. I'm from Pflugerville. So I'm actually working at my high school and doing uh, working within a mentorship program with a lot of those kids there. So while I'm trying to figure out what's next for me, you know, I can I can buy some time in the schools and, and get started there. So you're a natural at that. You really are pouring yourself into other people. I appreciate that, man. I got that from my mama. So it's, it's just in me. That's a beautiful trait. And talent because it's hard for some people it really is but uh, that's that comes from right here yeah absolutely there's, there's no doubt stevie it's hard to play off of that one that no <laughs> that was powerful that's good man that's, that's really good tell tell me something good i'm gonna keep it football like i always do <laughs> we beat alabama y'all yes sir we had, we had a great win against alabama we beat them um but we got some more games to play and that's really good actually right like we got got a night home game it's cooling off a little bit that's something good in austin we're out of the hundreds for the whole Ooh, week that's bit hey <laughs> that might be the best thing that has been said yet oh my god yeah. so it's a seven o'clock kickoff it should be you know we might be in the 90s at kickoff but we'll get down to the mid 80s and it's gonna be a good night uh on on saturday night long as the kids get back focused, the young men get back focused and uh, and have a good night, and then they can enjoy that win also. Not at 2.40 in the morning, though. Just, just, <laughs> just enjoy the win and then get back to our dorms. But, you know, another good thing is AO is back in Austin, right? I love it. He's starting his uh, his his second leg of his life or third leg of his life. You hey, know? The second um, chapter. The second chapter third. of his life. And pouring in the kids is awesome, you know. And um, so, uh, I, you know, I met uh, AO when he uh, he bought a, a condo downtown, and I got I had the privilege to hang out with his mom and dad, looking at condos, and uh, and talking real estate. What I love to do, I love football and I love real estate, and uh, hanging out with them and and um, dad just just smart smart individual. You can see why AO was raised right and and uh, and doing good for himself, and then to see AO get married and 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 uh, start his own family, that's something good, man. And it, it really is cool to watch. Keep it up, man. Thanks for coming on the podcast with us. Thanks for being here, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what your next chapter have for you, man. I'm I'm proud I of. Can't you, wait. Can't wait. Oh, be be this. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Um, play off of you two guys. Stevie, I, I think we both know of an organization I should probably connect AO to, and that is RBI Austin. 
Yeah. There's no doubt. Good no people. Doubt. Good people uh, over there. But to play, just to make it short, man, there's a lot of firsts for me. As you know, AO, uh, you and I both both have lost our mothers, um, and that's important to a son. Um, the thing that was mi- is, I'm missing is uh, the phone call after every game. Mm-hmm. Like she knows that these uh, these games are important. Well, in a fun way. Yeah. Like we. It was awesome, man. I'll just say that I, yeah. I had a conversation another way. Yeah. No. Absolutely. After that, after that Alabama game Saturday night, I, I just know that she was kicking and thrusting the arm up and yelling at that high pitched little Southern lady voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's but, good uh, stuff, man. But that was I had a conversation a different way, man. And that you were, were they may not be here uh, on earth, but they really are in a different way. Yeah. I'm starting to I'm starting to learn that. But that's hard when you expect that phone. To call. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you, man. Um hey, it's all in God's timing. It yeah. is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. Well, you, I, I, you, I've, I've loved this. Yeah, you lean lean on your faith and lean on your friends, man. We're all here for y'all. Hey, yeah, we're better with numbers and together. Yeah. yeah. Well, Stevie, much love to you and your fam. Hey, oh, man, I can't I, – I, I'm, I'm going to echo what Stevie said. I can't wait what's next. It is like watching a, 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 just a beautiful story unfold and a lot of prosperity, and you deserve everything good that's happening. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that, and appreciate you, big brother, Stevie. Thank you all <laughs> for giving me this platform. Thank you all for having me on, man. We had some fun tonight. Yeah, we yeah, did. It goes by too quick. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, for – the pride of Shreveport, Louisiana, that being uh, the Stevie Lee, and the pride of Pflugerville, the home hey. of the Panthers, A-O, and the OG Man K boys, that being Harbaugh Hards, Big Mike, and Coach Mo. What do we tell them, Stevie? We out. <laughs> you see the drippy, I'm fitted up. I'm in my car in the giddy up. Get out.